Go Terry Showborn, our Kenton County Family Court Judge. You'll do a great job. Active in the parades today. Yeah, little puppies over there. See that little puppy? <laughs> the Independence Day Memorial Day Parade. There's Miss Independence. Throwing some candy out to the kids.
great narrator right here. That's right. There goes the Boy Scouts. I was a tenderfoot, proud to say. <laughs> when I was at Simon Kenton High School. Kids love to get little pieces of candy. Hey, girls! Skyline, here's our skyline, man. Hey, skyline! The roses. And your name is? Peyton. Peyton, grab the skyline ball. <laughs> this is a skyline day. June and I love to eat up here at Skyline on the Roses Post. <laughs> well, she's a wonderful lady, but I'm for Terry uh, Showport. Uh, Terry King Showboard for Family Court Judge. I'm sure she's done a good job too. We never say anything negative about the opponent. We always just want to talk about the positive side of, of our candidate, Terry King Showboard. Judge Gentry got the uh, appointment by Governor Nevin to fulfill the term, but then there's an election where the people decide, and uh, Terry Showboy King won the primary by over 500 votes over two good candidates, and uh, I'm sticking with her because she has lots of experience and will do a great job on the on the family court position. But she'll have to keep working. Through the November campaign and then she'll have to work hard as a family court judge. Quite a show here today. That's one of the reasons that I really like Terry King's show board is her father was Phil King, state representative, 
and uh, back when I was with Congressman Breckenridge many years ago, and uh, the president of the student body at the community college, it was Phil King that introduced the legislation in the legislature to uh, establish four-year college here in northern Kentucky with the help of Governor Louis V. Nunn and uh, a lot of local state representatives, Art Schmidt, Ken Harper, and, and Clyde Middleton, and Don Johnson, and, and, uh, and it was Phil King that lined up all the Democrats in the legislature, including Julian Carroll and Scott Wendell Ford, to be in, in favor of the four-year college, established in 1968, the year I was president of the student body at the community college. And I uh, have to heap a lot of praise on the people that were involved. And so it was an honor and a pleasure to, to um, recognize the fact that his two, two of his children became attorneys, Phil King Jr. and uh, Terry King Showboard. And she has uh, raised a beautiful family. Kids just graduated from uh, Kevin Catholic uh, High School. And uh, the, uh, she's been real active in her church at uh, Oak Ridge Baptist. And quite an outstanding lady and attorney and working with all sorts of uh, uh, family institutions. So I'm proud to be a supporter of hers, and so is June. And, and it shows she's got a lot of support out there across the Kenton County for this position because she won the primary uh, by over 500 votes. And uh, that's a, really a testament to her recognition of all that she's done. So we encourage everybody to get out and vote. And one of their votes, we hope, is for Terry King Show Board for, for um, uh, Kenton County Family Court Judge. I sang for her grand... And... Uh, of course, as you know, this is Memorial Day. We'll have a few fireworks which will scare a few people, <laughs> including the old man here himself, myself. <laughs> so, but that's about the end of the parade coming down through here, and, and I'm sure they'll have a little ceremony up here. So, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition of godly principles, love, and prayers for all of us in our nation. And I hope we uh, get, behort, get behind uh, President Donald Trump and... Uh, Vice President Mike Pence and their team, and let them negotiate this business with uh, North Korea. And remember, the media is so biased against President Trump, you have to almost ignore them, it's sad to say, particularly the national media. Uh, I'm going to go over to an event with the Tribune and River City News and Tribune putting on an event at the Kenton County Library on the 30th where you uh, can hear uh, Mike Phillips talk about uh, fake news and, and real news and what's news and what's not news. And so uh, that'll be interesting. I intend to go over to the Kenton County Library in Erlanger and listen to that myself on the 30th, in the evening of the 30th. And from I believe it's from 5 o'clock or 5.30 to 7.30, something like that. But you can check with the Erlanger Library, and I think you'll enjoy it or check on Facebook. By the way, join us on Facebook as friends. Be happy to have you. Or check our television show out, Are You Ready?, uh, on Spectrum Cable every Friday evening at 4 o'clock and repeats itself at 10 o'clock. We've had on uh, several candidates and several people, including all three county clerks of northern Kentucky and uh, Gabriel Sumi and... Jim Larison and Tabitha Clemens from down in Grant County. Of course, Kenny Brown was out of town, but we'll be having him on eventually, too. And uh, he's one of my favorite people out in Boone County. And uh, we got elected out there uh, in a close race. Man, I mean to tell you, you think your vote doesn't count. 
Well, let's listen to this, folks. Uh, Circuit Clerk's race was down to about 35 votes. And the winner, I'm proud to say that I sang for his uh, campaign headquarters opening, David Martin, and uh, ran against Miss Murray. And, and she was a very credible, hardworking candidate. She'd been in the office about, I think, something like 16 years. But I thought she was going to retire. But, uh, well, uh, she's round up. She'll be, able, she'll be there until the next year. And I'm sure she'll do a great job of transferring the fires to David Martin. It'll be very, uh, very good. Uh, she's a wonderful lady. So that's that's a what elections are for, though, folks, and that's how close they can get. So in November, November, get out and vote. We had the lowest turnouts, some of the lowest turnouts in the state in northern Kentucky. And I can honestly say, as somebody who studied these things all my life, that we lost uh, a candidate for uh, uh, congressional district four. Uh, Pam Platt, uh, because the Northern Kentucky vote just didn't get out and vote. And the rural areas of uh, down close to Louisville and uh, down in, in, in close to the Ashland area, along the river, they got out and voted in uh, larger percentages. Therefore, their nominee, Seth, uh, uh, got, got the uh, primary nomination. Uh, now, of course, I'm a Massey fellow myself. I'm an independent, but I that's who I will probably support. Some things I don't like that he does, but he is an honest fellow, uh, honest to his principles. And uh, I'd like to see him support the president a little more than what he does, but he's just a little too uh, to the libertarian side for me. <laughs> I think sometimes you got to compromise a little bit because you, you're supposed to be there to help your constituents too, not just your own personal philosophy. And... Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll get to that race when it's time to get to it. But uh, uh, right now, uh, I think the best thing for us to do is just educate ourselves on all of these candidates, and uh, we'll try to do so on the show that we do called "Are You Ready?" And the reason we call it "Are You Ready?" is because are you ready for the Lord? And we ask the questions: Where have you been? What are you seeking? Where are you going? And are you ready? Are you ready for whatever you're asking to do? And are you ready for the Lord? And it's an hour show. We tape it from 12 to 1. And we'll be having on, we've already had on uh, uh, County Judge uh, Gary Moore, who won his race. Who I've worked with Gary for hundreds of years, it seems like. And a uh, fine young fella, and he won his race. And... Uh, We've had him on to talk about Boone County and his history and where he'd been. Great show. And then we're going to have on uh, Steve Pendry from Campbell County this Friday. And uh, also we're going to have on Jerry Peluso to talk about the, the um, uh, Italian festival where I always sing my old Kentucky home to open up the ceremony. And uh, so we'll be uh, having that uh, talk about that with Jerry Peluso and Judge Pendry about the county. And then we've lined up, actually, uh, Judge Knockleman and the judges from Grant County, the judge from uh, Pendleton County, and the judge from Owen County. And we're trying to line up the rest of the county judges from out in the rural areas to get them on to talk about their counties to, to help promote to what they're doing in their counties with uh, tourism and with agriculture and with business. Uh, the idea is to help Northern Kentucky and to educate people, like we've done with our history tapes of the history of all 120 counties in Kentucky, which you can find on YouTube and are in your county library called Kentucky History by Dr. John Stevenson, former superintendent of education, Commonwealth of Kentucky. Well, that's gonna, we're going to pause right now for a few minutes until we get uh, to a little later in the show here. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Now, in accordance with the United States Code 36116, Memorial Day, the President is requested to issue each year a proclamation. Kim Moser there. Calling on the people of the United States to observe Memorial Day by praying according to their individual religious faith for permanent peace, designating a time 
on Memorial Day during which the people may unite in prayer for a permanent peace, and calling of the people of the United States to unite in prayer at that time. I would like to ask our chaplain, Ms. Belinda Mills, to please unite us at this time in word of prayer. distinct honor to be able to introduce to you today our Grand, Mash Grand Marshal Staff Sergeant Tommy Riemann, who is a Silver Star and Purple Heart recipient with 15 years of service in the United States Army. Tommy's had had three deployments, twice to Iraq and once to the Balkans. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, Sergeant Riemann distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and courage under fire while service as the assistant team leader in Echo 51st Infantry Long Range Surveillance Company, for which he was awarded the Silver Star and Purple Heart. Sergeant Raymond later became a video game character and action figure, which we actually have one. Maybe we'll get you to sign it later. Sergeant Raymond was recognized by the President George Bush at the State of the Union address. He is also featured in Halfway Home, a documentary about the struggles soldiers face when they return from war. Tommy Riemann serves as the executive director for Jacob's Ladder, a veteran 501c3 that connects veterans and patriots to Christ through fellowship, community service, and mission trips. Tommy was named 2013 Veteran of the Year by U.S. Veteran Corps. He also sits on the board of Peace of Adventure and uh, Regenerate Wellness Fund. Tommy is also a spokesman for Justice for Vets and is actively engaged in the military community, raising awareness about PTSD and life after injuries. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce you to Staff Sergeant Tommy Freeman. Thank you. It's very humbling to be back in this fine city of Independence. It's been quite a long time. Uh, but there's so many familiar faces. Independence has changed drastically. I graduated Simon Kent in 1999. And coming up three years, it's just been remarkable to see the growth of the city. I'm very proud to be from Independence. I never thought I'd be back up here, coming back in a parade, uh, to represent those who have fought and served and died for our country. But I am honored. Today means a lot to me. Not very many of us like to reflect on death. But death is a very important part of our life. We all die for many different reasons. But those who have fought and died for our freedom need to be remembered. We reflect so we can grab onto the great things that we hold dear to our hearts. Each other, family, friends, a few drinks, hot dogs, barbecues. These are all fruits of the labor of those who have laid it down before us. And today we remember that. Every day, I'm reminded in my mind about those actions in 2003. I was just a young man deployed to Iraq, answering the call to our freedom. I was with a group of giants, men that were my brothers, they were my family, and we would literally die for one another. Throughout that time, I was with brothers that died for each other. Today is about them, Billy Serks, Bruce Robinson, Spencer Carroll, Matt Malkin, 
The list goes on and on. All men that are not here today, and today we get to celebrate them, remember them. I've been honored to go all over the country and tell my testimony. But the great thing is to be back here because this is where it started. All these people I see in front of me, Cassie, Ben, Bridges, uh, just so many people that have been a part of my growth as a man. It all started here. It all started on the football field down the street. And just coming back, I'm overwhelmed right now with so many different emotions. Today I'm a proud father of my two kids, Landon and Ellie. What? Uh, but being back here, I just have that sense of pride. You know, coming through the parade, seeing the town still coming together, uh, and the American Legion post here, just keeping this um, just time-honored tradition alive. I'm so grateful. From being with the president to the action figure to uh, riding a bike from Maine to Florida a few weeks ago, uh, the spirit of independence is alive, and I'm honored to carry that. So thank you guys very much, and happy Memorial Day. Very much, Tommy. I would like to ask our post adjutant, retired Air Force veteran, Mr. Lane Lobiller, to present Mr. Raymond with a small token of our appreciation for being our Grand Marshal for today's remembrance event. Wayne is presenting him with a certificate of appreciation and an American Legion coin that states, In appreciate of your service and assistance, thank you from the American Legion, veterans serving veterans. Tommy, thank you so much for your service and inspirational words. Now, earlier I mentioned the meaning behind today's remembrance. On Saturday, I was fortunate enough to attend a briefing by Bill Schneider and Valentin Quadville. I hope I said that right, Valentin. Thank you so much for my liberty. Valentin and his father, Gerald, are from Normandy, France. And Valentin's life mission is to ensure the people of France, especially the children who have never experienced the four years of occupation and loss of freedom, from the Germans won World War II that they will never forget. In addition, World War II veteran Doug Pickle told with such feeling how the French people welcomed him, praised him, honored him with such genuine emotions of gratitude. If you missed it, ensure to watch the rebroadcasting on the Telecommunications Board of North Kentucky. It just reminded me so much of how I was treated by my own writer back from Afghanistan. You see, I came back with cheers and thank yous. I'm an absolute firm believer in keeping Memorial Day as it was intended, a day of remembrance of those who died for us to be free. However, I don't think the American people truly justify or understand the sacrifices of all military go through, and especially those that work out, work or are in combat. Today, we willingly take the risk of death for all of us to maintain freedom in this great nation. So I think it's okay to also today to recognize and welcome all of our military and our audience today. Please, if you are a military or a veteran, please raise your hand. Thank you so very much. At this time, I want to take just a few moments to ask Marine veteran Mr. Patrick Santos to join us on stage. You see, Pat and his fellow Vietnam veterans didn't get welcomed home like me. They weren't honored. I have so many stories from my Vietnam veteran friends and their families of how they had to hide the fact that they served in Vietnam. How they were spat upon, threatened, had paint thrown up on their houses, their cars, and even them. Story of disgust and disgrace. And even though we can't go back in time to fix it, we can today take a small step in replacing those memories with new ones. At this time, I would like to ask and have fellow Marine Corps veteran and our post 275 vice commander Mr. John Mills officially welcome home Pat with an official White House sanctioned welcome home Vietnam veteran pen that states, a grateful nation thanks and honors you. that after the ceremony, if you have not received a welcome home pen, if you could please come up and let us know so we can order you a pen and present it to you 
at one of our many future events. Now, personally, I don't care how you remember. You can do so by placing a yellow ribbon around a tree like they used to do, or plant flowers, decorate a gravesite, or if you do choose, you can do a independent salute honor banner that's displayed along our parade bowers. I'd love to fill all the poles for next year. The City of Independence will be doing another hanging around 4th of July, and we really appreciate the City for all its support, especially our Public Service Department and Mr. Ken Hicks, the Director. They do an awesome job every day for all of us. I promise I will get you to your holiday in just a few moments, but I do have Mr. Joe Montgomery, founder of Operation Honor, here to do a quick presentation. Joe? Thank you, Rusty. Uh, as he said, my name is Joe Montgomery. I want to thank everybody up here and out there for joining us. You might have seen our truck, the Operation Honor Truck, in today's parade. Uh, we have become more and more and more over the last five years involved in the city of independence. And this banner right down here is one of the honor banners that we will see hanging along the road here. Our goal is to fill every pole, as Rusty said, within the next couple of years. So uh, you have up until uh, the end of June. If you want to, uh, you have a cousin, uncle, brother, mother, sister, anyone, we're honoring veterans, active duty, first responders, and law enforcement. Please, you can go on to operationhonor.org and let's fill this street with honor banners and show, show the country really how much independence cares. So, but this is my son, James, by the way. Uh, so what we did and what we're going to do continue through the support of the community is we were at Kroger's a couple weeks ago. You might have saw us. We were out there. We grilled out burgers and hot dogs for our veteran community. We, we, we gave any veteran and most of their family a free hot dog and a burger. And we want to continue doing that. And we received a number of donations. Uh, and uh, with the help of Rusty and the American Legion, uh, we want to present a check, which I forgot. Don't act like it. For $200 uh, to the uh, American Legion Post for their support. So thank you very much, Rusty. It's in the mail. <laughs> we'll be looking for it, Joe. <laughs> thank you, Operation Honor, so much for all you do for our military veterans and their families. To conclude our events today, I mentioned several times that today is about remembrance. So I want to end today's gesture with a poem called Hashtag Remembrance. I encourage you all to use hashtag remembrance in your social media posts. And please follow us on Facebook to see all of our events throughout the year. Our next event is June 14th at Sterling Stakes Park, which is our proper disposal of American flags. It only lasts a total of about 30 minutes, and I hope everyone will go straight over to Memorial Park for the beginning of Independence Summer Concert Series with bands, vendors, and the North Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition will be there with the Veterans Service Tent. Also please, you, also, please tag us, Moon Brothers Post 275, the American Legion, of any parade pictures, video, or your remembrance displays. My last public service announcement, I promise then I will read the short poem. But tonight on Spectrum Channel 185 and Bell Channel 821 is the sneak peek of my new veteran services show. But I think it's helpful for everyone, military, veterans, family members, and the community starts about 7.29 p.m., and it's veterans and bars getting bourbon. And now, the poem, hashtag remembrance. Today is a day of remembrance. Why? Because too many of our soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and coasties have died. Sad. They did so to give us our freedom, our liberty, earned. And we can never truly repay them. Truth. However, we can't honor them in memory. Yes, don't forget the reason for today. And remember, remember, remember. Thank you everyone for being here today and remembering. Have a safe and blessed holiday. Thank you. Well, been a long time, yeah, bless your heart. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. God bless you. And this young man, what's your name? I'm, I'm John Michael. John I'm Michael. A aspiring uh, military. Oh, wonderful. I just haven't chosen between Army and Marines yet. So. <laughs>
Well, uh, well now you was. Have to go army. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you're with Kim Mosier today. Yeah, she's wonderful, isn't she? Yeah, she is. She definitely is. I try to get in any event or anything to help her out. She's very good. We had her on our television show. Are you ready? And she did a beautiful job. And her husband's my doctor, oh, Dr. Yeah. Neil Moser. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he's a great doctor.